Hello. Hello. We are back with another video on the channel today. And I know in the last one I said that's going to be the last one until the new year and all that stuff. But there's been so much drama, well, drama happened in the last 24 hours. And I've had a few people message me asking for my thoughts and if I could do a video on the matter. So today I'm back with another video. One more before the new year. We're going to be talking about the ref, possible VAR in Scotland, and the treatment that Morelos gets. So to start this part of the video off, a lot of you will have seen that Rangers statement yesterday to call for VAR into our game again. Now of course this sparked a lot of opinions and debates. I put a poll on my Twitter which the results were this day. So it is extremely close for people wanting it or thinking it's just the referees that need educated better, better referees, however you want to word that. But there was a number of reasons yesterday of honest mistakes against Rangers and Rangers in their statement not only talked about the old firm just passed there, but also the cup final and previous incidents as well. So I'll start this off by putting in some pictures as well. A Rebo's jersey getting tugged. Katic's, fair enough, probably was a penalty, clear tug. But look at this picture of a Rebo getting tugged down. Nothing mentioned about that. Here's a picture of Ryan Christie grabbing Alfredo's balls. Not much said about that, not a yellow card, you, you would think so, I know. Another one, this one was so obvious that it was a penalty as well. Julian, literally dragging my little back, he's just that strong, they never fell over. If I had any other play player they're falling over, it's a guaranteed penalty. But look how clear that one is. You've got this one, which was a foul against Rangers, against Golton, where you can see Christie lunging in two feet, studs up off the ground to clear the ball, and it was a foul against Rangers somehow. Julian should have been off. Again, somehow, remarkably, it almost was like, maybe not as bad when a couple of seasons ago and Dar McGregor literally flying DDT'd Morelos, grabbed him around the neck and the foul went against Morelos, but this one maybe wasn't quite as bad as that, but Morelos threw on goal, Julian takes him out from behind, tangle the legs, which you can see on screen now, and that got given as a foul against Morelos. Another one that Julian should have been carded at least for, because Morelos was carded for something very similar, coming into the back of Brown just after he played the ball, which Julian you can see on screen now, the ball's not near him, just goes up to Morelos, shoves him in the back, the exact same thing that Morelos got booked for doing it to Brown. The left back should have had a second yellow for this. So, so clear on the counter attack, dragged back by the arm, and one of the most confusing ones out of the lot of them was McGregor coming in, catching Ryan Jack in the shin after Jack wins the ball, and again, that was in like the 92nd minute or something, the ref just wanted to give Celtic one more chance. So another interesting talking point that has just came up and starting to arise this morning, no idea how people never noticed this at the time, but it's starting to arise now, Scott Brown seems to have been booked twice in the game and not sent off. Of course he got booked first in the first half uh, for his tackle, but then he also seems to get booked during the penalty incident where of course Katic gets booked but Clancy takes his hand down and then puts it back up towards Brown but then on the TV and all that sort of stuff it only came up saying Katic got booked but it's so visibly obvious, I'll show you the pictures now, that Clancy had raised his second yellow card and gave it to Brown. Now I can't play the video of it due to like some copyright reasons of course just in case but you can see the video for yourself, you should type it in. He, he drops his hand and raises it again. It could have been for the blatant smash to Tav's face, or going up and enticing for a yellow card to be given. But either way, he got booked a second time and never got sent off. Let me know your thoughts about it down in the comments below, because you can see it in the video as well. It, it does look like he's booked Brown. The worrying thing is, all these examples are just from the one game. Never mind, we'll be here forever. We can make a, a movie on the amount of stuff that's went like that throughout this season alone, never mind in the past against Rangers. But seeing this sort of thing, of course their goal as well would have been chopped off because it was a blatant handball. For situations like this, would you want to see VAR brought into the game? Or again, do you just think it's because the rest are incompetent? So now moving on to the Morelos treatment that he gets in this country. On screen now you can see what Morelos done, what his priorities were after the old firm finished. Straight to Colombia, through his foundation he was playing a charity match, everyone in the team all had Rangers stuff on, everyone in the crowd had Rangers stuff on that he's donating through his foundation and charity, thousands of people in attendance, he's such a good guy on and off the pitch, 
you can see from the support in this, the Rangers fans know the true Alfredo Morelos and not the one that is portrayed by this media and the bias in this country. So let's talk about the celebrations from the game. Of course, Kent's celebration with the gun signs, right? There's top, top footballers all over the world that no outcry has done about it. Even their ex-player, Robbie Keane, doing his little forward role in shooting gun like, there is no outcry about that, no outcry about all these top footballers across the world. Why is it so much of a problem for Kent to be doing that when, again, after the game he came out and justified it for just being like a reference to his favourite hip-hop artists? Meanwhile, the Green Brigade are holding up banners like this, pretending to shoot Rangers fans. Now moving on to the ridiculous way that the Morelos throat-cutting gesture has been portrayed. Of course he didn't mean it in any bad way towards people in the crowd and all that stuff, he's not that type of guy. I'll put it on screen now of what that means in Colombian, it's just nothing like, it's the same with his oh, get up you gesture that the media are trying to say he done, it is totally different in Colombia. Yeah of course it might be something that he would learn here, but it's nothing that he does not mean that when he does it that way. Morelos was also very clearly racially abused which some of the reactions and some of the responses to this have been absolutely incredible by the media. How ignorant they are being regarding that situation. But I'll play the clip now and it is so blatantly clear the racism. <laughs> Celtic being Celtic came out with the usual deflection tactic to try and avoid that sort of thing being linked with them in any way rather than dealing with the issue as it should be done. As you can see on screen now, a Celtic spokesperson saying things like this. Absolutely disgusting there, like, you just expect Celtic to come out and say apologies for any racism that may have happened, we'll deal with it accordingly, that sort of thing, but of course that just doesn't happen with them. You've got Chris Sutton coming out, and as you can see on screen now, wanting Morelos banned for like five games for his gesture, where again, it was nothing about what he's trying to portray, and then there's people everywhere in different countries, that he's never mentioned this, that are all trying to encourage players to walk off for racism. Chris has said nothing about that, just so fueled and blinded by his hatred and jealousy over Rangers that he can only see one side of the story. So while Alfredo Morelos was in Colombia playing a charity match, there was still papers in our country writing headlines like this. Words by Tom Lucas, a Celtic sports psychologist with almost blatant racism that you can see from his words in this. He's a man who in his position also goes on Twitter and refers to us as Sevco and says referees should never be allowed old firm games again, such as John Beaton. And people still sometimes wonder why Alfredo celebrates like this on the pitch. I mean, you can't blame him. If he was Scottish, if he played for Celtic, there would be statues built of him, as people have said in the past. It, you really, really would. It's just because of who he is and a Rangers player. But hey, we all know one of the main reasons that this is happening is their fear of Rangers because they know that we are back where we belong and we are on course to win this title this season because we have proven that we are a better team than them yet again and this season is the time to prove it. When you've got Chris Commons writing stuff like this saying we need to spend $100 million to stay in Celtic's league and now it kind of looks quite embarrassing because it looks like Celtic need to spend to keep up with their team. Their agenda is clear and it is to try and force Alfredo Morelos out of this country. It is what they are coming together to try and do because they know the power that he has and the drive in their team that he has to bring us towards this title. But now guys, that is going to be all and this will be, this time I mean it, the last video of the year or of the decade actually. So I'd like to actually take a little minute at the end here just to say like honestly, thank you so so much. 2019 has been absolutely amazing for my channel and hopefully we can keep this going in 2020. If you guys keep enjoying the videos, I will continue to make them because as a hobby I love doing it and seeing the positive feedback and the positive comments, it just, it's something that I'm going to keep on doing and I enjoy doing it and it puts a smile on my face every time I see one of those positive comments down there below or on Twitter or Instagram or whatever you guys message me but Thanks again guys if you have watched the video all the way until this point. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, it helps it massively. Subscribe if you haven't already, we've passed 3,000 subscribers and we've absolutely smashed it. We've gained over 100 subscribers in literally two days since the old farm. It's absolutely amazing support guys, but once again, 
Hope you all have a good New Year's party tonight or whatever you're doing. All the best in 2020. We'll catch you in the next video.